everybody! Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Plants vs. Zombies. So, we have now cleared the first world of the game. We've got nine amazing plants to choose from, and we're ready to start World 2. What will World 2 have in store for us? Let's find out. Oh, what is this? Hey, Crazy Dave, it's been a while. <laughs> Evening, Artie. Okay. These zombies just won't let up, will they? You'll notice that fighting zombies at night is different than in the day. For one thing, you won't get any sun falling from the sky. You can still get sun from sunflowers, though. And lucky for you, you got yourself some puff shrooms. Plant as many of those as you can and you'll be A-O good. Yeah, so we're still in the front yard. But now <laughs> we're in the front yard at night. So yeah, the main difference between the daytime and nighttime levels is that you aren't going to get sun that just falls from the sky at night, so the only way to get sun is from sunflowers. So basically, we're going to be dealing with less sun, because you might not think about it, you might not think this, but um, sun falls from the sky pretty frequently, and that's actually how you get a decent amount of your sun, especially early on in the levels. Like, without sun falling from the sky, our early game sun amount for these nighttime levels is going to be very, very low. But fortunately, this is where the new plant we got comes in handy. Puff shrooms. They literally are free to plant. And these fiends are busted. So these fiends are literally just pea shooters, but have slightly less range. I think they can only shoot three or four squares in front of them. But they're free. And they still have the same fast recharge that pea shooters have. So yeah, you can literally clear, I think, every nighttime level in the game pretty easily just using puff shrooms. So bring them for every nighttime level. That's gonna be... I'm not gonna say completely necessary, but basically. And because we have puff shrooms, we don't really need potato mines. Because the whole potato mine strategy to, uh, <laughs> to uh, build up our sun supply is not needed. Because puff shrooms will do the job even better. We will want snow peas to slow things down. Repeaters are a little harder to use at night. Just because sun is more scarce, so it's harder to get to that 200 value. I'll still bring them anyways. I'll also bring walnuts. And then not chomper, not potato mine. I don't need Pea Shooter because I got Puff Shroom, so I'll bring, I guess, Cherry Bomb. Probably won't use it, though. That's another change, though. We got Graves. So Graves are the other gimmick for nighttime levels. Uh, you cannot plant on top of Graves. And, um, zombies can spawn from the Graves during huge waves. So we gotta watch out for that. And as you can see, yeah, we just have very, very little sun. But thankfully, we have Puff Shrooms. Oh, man. So yeah, Puff Shroom can't reach the zombie when he's all the way back there, but as soon as he steps on that square, boom, Puff Shroom is doing his job. We'll plant another Puff Shroom in that lane just so to make sure that zombie gets finished off. As you can see, yeah, it's taking us forever just to build up our sunflowers because of how little sun we have. We get so much of our early game sun from the sky, so... It's a good thing we got those damn puff shrooms. Brains. Brains. So yeah, like Crazy Dave said, we're just gonna plant a whole bunch of these puff shrooms and they'll take care of things. Also, the nighttime levels have possibly my favorite music in the game. Well, I say that. Every song in the game is my favorite song. I'm not going to say that the Puff Shrooms are exactly the same as Pea Shooters, because later on, there will be things later on in the game that make them slightly different from Pea Shooters. But they're, at this point in the game, they are by and large the same. This is a new zombie. This is the Newspaper Zombie. So the Newspaper Zombie is carrying a newspaper in front of him, which will absorb damage from him. Or for him. And what happens is when we destroy his newspaper, he will get mad and start running at us much faster. But thankfully... Ooh, save up money to purchase cool stuff. So that was a coin that got dropped. Uh, you, when coins get dropped, make sure you pick them up, because that's the currency of the game, and there's stuff, cool stuff that you want to buy. Coins are random drops from enemies. They, they cannot drop in the first world, I'm pretty sure. At least on your first playthrough of the first world. So there we go. We finally have our two columns of sunflowers, and our puff shrooms are kicking butt and taking names just fine. But at this point, let's start giving them a little bit of help. Let's put those snow peas down. 
There we go. Silver coins are worth $10 in this, apparently. Yeah, the newspaper zombies are not that difficult to deal with. As long as you have a couple puff shrimps in the lane, they, they should go down pretty quickly. And as you can see, yep, huge wave, a zombie popped up out of every grave. Usually it'll just be regular zombies that pop up out of graves, but I believe there can be conehead zombies and potentially even bucket zombies that pop out of graves. I could be mistaken about that, though. It's been a while since I've played this, but I'm pretty sure, at least on later levels, you can, you can see... Bucket heads popping out of graves. Boom! Get another coin. And a new plant, which will be very useful in this world. We get a new plant. The Sun Shroom. Gives small sun at first and normal sun later on. So this is kind of an alternate version of the Sunflower. So these guys only cost 25 sun to plant, half the amount that the Sunflower costs. And what will happen is that they'll start generating tiny sun, which only gives you 15 sun per one, but after like a minute has passed or so, they'll grow up and then they'll give the same amount of sun as a sunflower. So, for nighttime levels, these guys are going to be better than sunflowers, but I find that sunflowers are better for daytime levels. Hey, you've collected $300 in coins so far! Yeah, because we collected 50 coins just by picking coins up from enemy drops, but also now, at the end of every level, when we get a new plant, we're going to get money as a result of that. So, that's going to be how we get money, mainly. When you yeah, when you collect uh, $750, I'll sell you something really neat -o. Also, I think that was an example last level where we picked up 50 coins. That should have given us an achievement that was in the iPhone version, which I don't think is in this one, called Penny Pincher, where if you pick up at least 30 coins on a level without letting any of them drop, you get that achievement. I'll, I'll bring up random achievements that got patched out of the game as we come across them. Okay, so we got regular zombies, cone zombies, bucket zombies, and newspaper zombies. Fun, fun. Sorry about that. I had to wait for the background noise to die down. Yeah, so we're definitely going to want puff shrimps and sun shrimps for this. Because we got bucket heads and newspaper zombies, we're going to need some decent firepower as well. So we want snow pea to slow things down. Walnut, because we might need that in case something like a bucket head pops up and puff shrimps won't be enough to deal with them. Also bring the cherry bomb. And, uh... Yeah, I guess repeater in case there's more than one huge wave. If there's only one huge wave on a nighttime level, the repeaters generally will never come into play. But if there's more than one, the repeaters can actually still be useful. Yeah, and I'll show you guys why the Sun Shroom is better for nighttime levels. I On my first playthrough, I'm like, that sounds terrible, I'm not going to use them. But, uh, having... Having gone through the whole game point using only sunflowers for nighttime levels and then the whole game using sun shrimps, sun shrimps are better for nighttime levels. At the very least, for 50 sun, you could either get one sunflower or two sun shrooms. Getting two sun shrooms will net you slightly have more sun in the long run. One sunflower will only give you uh, 50 sun, or 25 sun, every time it generates sun, whereas two sun shrooms will ge generate you 30. Plus, if you have two sun shrooms, you can get sun more frequently just because you'll have two things producing sun for you instead of just one. And also, it's just less investment because the sun shrooms will eventually give you the same amount as sunflowers, but there's just... Yeah, they take a little bit longer to do that, but there's less, less upfront investment, which for nighttime levels is definitely what I'm about because the hardest part about nighttime levels is that the, the lack of sun makes you have very little sun at the beginning of the levels. But here... We can take advantage of having less sun by just planting more of the stuff later, and then it really doesn't affect our sun count later on. So, sun shrimps are better for night. As for if you're wondering, will our sun shrimps better in the daytime? The answer is no, but I'll get into why that is in a couple videos from now. Oh boy. So now we got our two columns of sun producers, so we focus everything on our <laughs> on our firepower. Beautiful. The graves are annoying, because I would love to be able to plant stuff here. But oh well. 
as you can see, our first guy grew up, so now he's gonna give us 25 sun per uh, generation. Okay, so I think it takes them a little longer than 60 seconds. It might take them closer to like a minute and a half. The fact that puff shrooms are literally just free to plant is crazy, especially with their fast recharge. Like, if they had a slow recharge, they'd be a lot worse. So I'm sure you noticed, we've just had a lot more sun on this level by using sun shrooms. We haven't even got- we only just got to the first huge wave, and now we have- we have three snow peas here instead of just two. Actually, we have four instead of two or three. So we are still winning in the sun game. I also like how the music picks up a bit whenever the huge waves come in. Alright, now we're gonna start removing the back uh, puff shrooms and replacing them with repeaters as we <laughs> get enough sun for them. Yeah, newspaper zombies are pretty easy because they're new. Like, after their newspaper is destroyed, they have very little HP afterwards. As well as the fact that after their newspaper is destroyed, there's like a second or two where they stop and are like surprised. So they're not, they're pretty, they're pretty simple enemies to deal with. Plus, they're, you'll get plants later on that can literally destroy them past the newspaper. Uh, it, I'm not making sense. I'll, I'll bring it up when we get the plants. But you'll get plants that basically will allow you to kill them before their newspaper even gets destroyed. So they'll just be slow. <laughs> nah. Forever saved for the repeaters. Yeah, I, I love the snow peas, because the snow peas don't just slow down the zombie movement. It slows down the zombie eating speed as well. Normally it takes about three... wait, let me think about it. Yeah, normally it takes them about three seconds for a, a zombie to eat a plant at full HP. But when it's slowed down, that ups it to like six or seven seconds. It's wonderful. Oh boy, huge wave. Generally it's only the final huge wave that causes the zombies to pop out of the graves, by the way. Oh, sure enough, yep. Coneheads popped out of the graves. I knew I wasn't crazy. Alright. Take that. Alright, we get ourselves another plant. It's another mushroom. We got a new plant! The Fume Shroom! Shoots fumes that can pass through screen doors. That may not make much sense to you. And also, that's a terrible description. I'll give you a much better one. So this costs 75 sun. So this is kind of an alternate version of the Pea Shooter as well. So it also has short range like the Puff Shrooms, but it shoots farther than the Puff Shrooms. I think it shoots four or five squares in front of it. And it shoots blasts that can basically pass through solid objects. So that has two advantages. Some zombies, like say the newspaper zombies, have basically used their newspapers as their shields. The Fume Shroom will shoot right through the, uh, the newspaper and actually hit the zombie through it, allowing her, allowing the Fume Shroom to uh, kill the zombie without destroying the newspaper. We're also going to see another zombie like that on this next level. The other advantage that this doesn't tell you about, which is kind of the main reason Fume Shrooms are good, is that the fumes that the Fume Shroom shoots hit every single zombie in its range, not just the one in the front. So you can hit multiple zombies with one Fume Shroom, and that's actually pretty nice. So, we will definitely be taking advantage of the Fume Shroom. So this is the new enemy they were talking about, the Screen Door Zombie. So the Screen Door Zombie has a door in front of it that it uses as a shield, and the Fume Shroom can shoot right through it and basically treat this guy like he's just a regular old zombie. 
However, if you didn't have Fume Shrooms, then you would have to directly attack the screen door, which does two things. One, it gives him way more HP. I think it gives him the same amount of HP that a bucket would give a bucket zombie. But the other advantage that the screen door zombie has is that he will not get slowed down by the snow peas if he has the screen door up. This, the, the frozen pea will hit the screen door and damage it, but it will not slow the zombie down. So, he can be frightening, but he's honestly not too bad. So, we'll do Puff Shroom, Sun Shroom, and Fume Shroom for sure. And Snow Pea. Even if they're, the screen door zombies are immune to it, the others will not be. Uh, we'll do Walnut just in case, and then... At this point, I think Cherry Bomb. I've been taking Cherry Bomb way more often than I normally do, but it's nice for the last wave. And none of the other plants are very good. I mean, I don't need Sunflower, because I already have Sun Shroom. Don't really need Pea Shooter or Repeater, because Fume Shroom is going to do the job for that. Chomper kind of sucks. Potato Mine sucks if you have Puff Shrooms. Well, I guess... Now nah, I'll get Repeater for the range, just because, again, the Fume Shrooms don't have great range. So I can have, like, a lane... So I'll have like a lane of snow peas and a lane of repeaters and then fume shrooms all in front of it. Uh, I'll start with the puff shrooms and gradually as I get enough sun, I'll replace the puff shrooms with fume shrooms. That's kind of how I like doing things. <laughs> I love how they introduce that every time the zombie series. The zombies are coming. All right, so yeah, nothing real new, nothing really new yet. Just same old, same old. Puff shrooms in the front to deal with the zombies. Sun shrooms in the back to build up our sun supply. Eventually, the levels will get. I don't want to say monotonous because they keep. The nice trouble plants for zombies is like basically every level you get a new plant to use, and every two levels they introduce a new zombie type to deal with. So they keep they keep it fresh. It's never, I've never, it's never really a part of Flights for Zombies where I'm like, oh, this is boring, because they constantly are introducing new stuff to you. And plus the gameplay is just simple, but very, very fun. So I'll show off the Fume Shroom. So yeah, Fume Shroom can shoot farther away than the Puff Shrooms can. Oh, there we got screen door zombie. Okay, we need a fume shroom down there, stat. I'm also gonna put a walnut down there once he eats the puff shroom. So yeah, as you can see, the puff shrooms are attacking his screen door, but the fume shroom is able to kill him through the screen door. need to start getting some snow peas. Ah, no! Oh, thank you. <laughs> I accidentally... See, I'm playing this in windowed mode. That's the only way I can actually record this. And I accidentally clicked away from the window, which stops the game. But thankfully, when it stops the game, it pauses it for you. It doesn't continue without the audio. I will try to avoid doing that again, but if, if there's sun at the very edge of the screen, sometimes I misclick and stuff happens. Huge wave of zombies is approaching. How much am I going to regret not bringing Cherry Bomb? Okay, final wave, so I'm probably going to regret it actually a decent amount. Yeah, I should have brought Cherry Bomb instead of Repeater. Oh well, still no harm done. We'll just put a... So yeah, as you can see, these two guys, you can see all three of those zombies up there were glowing from getting hit with, with damage. Alright. Not too bad. That's another thing. You get money at the end of... I haven't even brought up the lawnmowers yet, have I? And, okay, well, I'll bring that up next time. You got a new plant! The Grave Buster. Plant it on a grave to remove the grave. So 75 sun, it can eat a grave and remove it. That's actually pretty nice for the nighttime levels. Not necessary, but it'll be nice. 
Hey, want to buy an extra seed slot? It'll cost you $750, but you'll be able to choose seven seeds per level instead of six. How's that sound? Yes, that's a good deal. One of the best things you can buy. All right, and hey, when you save up for, to $5,000, I'll show you the eight seed slot upgrade. Let's check you later. I can't believe I haven't even brought up the lawnmowers yet. Okay, so new level, no new enemies, so Puff Shroom... Sunshroom, Fumeshroom, and Gravebuster. We'll be bringing all of them. Snow Pea, Walnut, and Cherry Bomb. So as you can see, seven, uh, seven uh, plants now instead of just the usual six, which is nice. So, I have not brought up the lawnmowers yet. The lawnmowers are kind of your last line of defense. If a zombie somehow manages to get past all of your defenses and reaches your house, if there is a lawnmower in the way, the lawnmower will kill the zombie and it will move down the lane and kill every single zombie in the lane. And then after the lawnmower is gone, if a zombie reaches your house, then they, uh, then you die and lose the level. So lawnmowers are kind of your last level of defense. If you finish a level, every lawnmower that is still there that you haven't used will give you money. At least once you start, re once you reach world two. So that's where we get most of our money, it's just by not having the zombies trigger our lawnmowers. As you can see, because of the existence of lawnmowers, uh, it makes it really difficult to lose the game. As I said, the game is very easy. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because I actually appreciated how easy it was. It allowed me to enjoy it as a child, and I still enjoy it today. And you know, if you want a tougher game, Plants vs. Zombies 2 exists. I'm not saying that's tough for the right reasons, but it, it it's there. No! I clicked away again! Oh boy, a pole vaulting zombie, eh? I do love the sound that the pole vaulting zombies make when they pole vault. Here's Gravebuster in action. He looks creepy. Also, I don't really know what kind of a plant he's supposed to be. He doesn't look like a plant. He looks like a rock. I think there's some, like, brambles on top of him. But, like, still. Also, thankfully, uh, Gravebuster has a fast recharge. Uh-oh. Gonna point the puff shroom back there just to make sure that that guy dies. Uh oh. That guy is in a problematic situation. So, you know what I'm actually gonna do about him? I'm gonna use a cherry bomb. Once I get enough sun. Yeah, that's a lot of sun to spend on one zombie dying, but he was getting too far back. He's getting dangerously close. If I was more astute, I would be able to deal with the pole vaulting zombies by planting puff shrooms at the front of the lane for them. Before they vault, so that way they don't vault past all my stuff. But, oh well. I also want to point out that the Gravebuster is still a plant that can still be eaten by zombies. So you don't want to plant a Gravebuster on a grave when there's like a, a zombie or two that are right on top of the grave. Otherwise, they might eat the Gravebuster before he finishes eating the grave. And that would be a grave mistake. Wow, how did I get so low on on plants? Did I die? I just wanted him gone. Yeah. So for pole vaulting zombie, I should plant stuff right in front of the lane so he gets rid of his pole early. And hey, all all the graves are gone. That's wonderful. I thought I planted the walnut farther ahead than that. Perhaps I'm mistaken.
So yep, Snow Pea doing nothing to Mr. Screen Door. Mr. Screen Door on a submarine. Yeah, walnuts are actually pretty good. I think I undersold them a little bit early on in the game. Where I'm like, they're okay, but they're not like amazing. No, they're they're pretty great. Again, a couple fume shrooms in a lane will be very good for taking out the screen door zombies. Alright, this should be the last huge wave. Here we go, and because we ate all of the graves, no zombies will be popping up out of them. There we go! And here we get a new fan of the Almanac. The Suburban Almanac keeps track of all plants and zombies you encounter. Interesting. View Almanac. So we can view plants and view zombies. So these will kind of give you a ba You can basically go to, from plant to plant and it'll give you an overview of what each plant is and what it does. As well as just a funny little uh, bio about them. So that's cool. Yeah, you feel free to peruse it if you want. I mean, I'm kind of your Almanac. I know more about the plants than what the game will tell you here. So, feel free to give it a read yourself. Maybe I'll read the funny little, uh, quotes later on. Then you can also view the zombies, and the zombies will give you a very bare-bones introduction of what each zombie is and how tough they are, and as well as the same as that little, they like the plants, they have that little excerpt that's written about them that can be kind of funny. So feel free to give it a read if you want. Ever play a game called Whack a Zombie? It's just like hunting squirbos. You know those furry little rodents that dig holes in your lawn? Yeah, it's just like that. But instead of squirbos, it's zombies. And instead of a shovel, it's a mallet. And instead of me, it's you. <laughs> so here we get to play Whack a Zombie. We don't have plants, but we have a hammer. We just click on the zombies and whack them. And let me tell you what, at least in the iPhone version of the game, this was the easiest level in the game by far. You just tap on the zombies and they die. You can also collect sun and plant stuff. I like planting the grave busters just to reduce the amount of graves that zombies can pop up out of. Now granted, more graves can just pop up out of the ground out of nowhere, but still. The zombies are so easy to kill that, like... Why would you plant anything else? Why would you ever plant a potato mine? I guess I could- I guess I could understand the cherry bomb if you've got, like, a huge amount that are all running and you can't click on them all in time. I guess. But it definitely seems like the Grave Buster is the way to go, and you definitely want to put the Grave Buster on the graves that are closest to your lawnmowers. Because then... Zombies have to spawn from farther away. So even with a mouse, this is still pretty easy. Oh, you can't. You can't make another grave grow there. How dare you. So yeah, again, every five levels you get a different kind of level, so this isn't one of those mini-games. And again, whether you like the minigames or not, is it's your mileage may vary. I think the minigames are at least fun, and I'm glad that they're in it. Some of them are more fun than others, though. None of them reach the level of badness of the uh, Donkey Kong 64 uh, minigames, but still. So the cone zombies you'll need to whack twice. Once to get rid of their cone, and once to actually finish them off. Yeah, okay, so this is, like, slightly tougher in the PC version where you need to click on stuff, but... Like, the iPhone version, like, the zombies never left their graves. It was just like, boom, 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 because you can just do it so quickly. And the screen is small, so you don't even have... Oh, that's great. Bucket zombies need free wax to get rid of. Still very simple. Ooh, gold coins are worth, I believe, 30G. No, they're worth 50G. Yeah. Well, 
Call me Scrooge McDuck. All right, final wave. All right, I guess that was a little bit harder than the iPhone version, but still laughably easy. Cool. And here we go. Our next plant is... Hypnoshroom makes a zombie fight for you. Well, we'll have to explore the wonders of Hypnoshroom next time because another five levels are up. Only five more left in the uh, in the blackout back uh, fr not, not backyard in the nighttime front yard area. So we'll be finishing up night in the front yard next time. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm Colorful Artie. Next five levels should be interesting. We'll get some unique new plants. And yeah, it'll be just a fun time all around. It'll be it'll be a grand time for all. It'll be wonderful. Hope you guys are enjoying the series. I'm definitely enjoying playing this. Hope to see you next time. Until we meet again, my friends, have a great day and God bless.